Why is there bleeding a sphincterotomy? Well, as you can see here, the bile duct, ente ampulla of fatter, the biliary duct, sphincter, the pancreatic duct, the duct itself, the sphincter area, have a very, very rich blood supply that starts from the gastroduodenal artery, inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery, anterior and posterior pancreatic or duodenal arcades, the anterior superior pancreatic or duodenal artery, and communicating arteries. So it's not important that you remember all of these arteries, but be assured that it's important to know that there are many, as occasionally the bleeding after a sphincterotomy, it's not just coming from one branch, but it's coming from several ones. And the second take home message from this slide is, because the blood supply is that rich, we are going to encounter bleeding. And this very nice study from Yurjali shows us anatomic histologic correlates of what it, it is the sphincter of Ori and the blood supply. We see that most vessels are at the nine and three o'clock position. And the least amount of vessels are at the 11, one and five. Usually the cuts that we do for biliary sphincterotomy are towards the 11 o'clock position. And for pancreatic duct sphincterotomy, is it towards one o'clock position. So very important to remember where the largest blood supply areas are. So the bile duct goes towards the 11 o'clock. As we can see here, the pancreatic duct goes towards one o'clock. And what I want to show you in the following slides is the figure of eight configuration of the bile duct. It's not a zero or round like most of us had learned in medical school, but going into detail, you'll see that it's really a figure of eight muscular shape. And in the middle, there is the famous septum. So it's important to understand the shape and the directions of the cut, because we will be cutting towards 11 for bile duct sphincterotomy and towards one when we are doing the pancreatic duct sphincterotomy. This slide showed the aorta and the branches of the gastroduodenal artery, the arcades, the anterior arcade, the posterior arcade, and the papillary arteries, as you can see here. So when we're doing selective cannulation before performing a sphincterotomy, it's important that you remember this figure of eight because this will facilitate your direction of wire and sphincter dome when you are cannulating. The bile duct, as you can see, is in the upper portion going towards the left. And you see in this case where a pancreatic duct had been placed previously, because there was failed cannulation of the bile duct, you can see that the entrance to the pancreatic duct is completely different. And in between the entrance to the pancreatic duct and the bile duct, there is the septum. So this slide is very nice for your practice to remember when you are doing bile duct cannulation or pancreatic cannulation, if you want to do it selectively. This here just shows you the best way to angulate your utensils to do a selective cannulation. But now let's talk more about bleeding and hemostasis. The problem with hemostasis when we are tra trying to treat it in patients who have post sphincterotomy bleeding can be that the scope position can be awkward. They can have a surgical altered anatomy like this case. The papilla may appear weird or abnormal or hanging, like in this case, or it can be located inside of a diverticulum or on the side, as we can see here. So these are additional challenges that may be encountered when we are trying to do hemostasis.